Hello, future lawyers, and welcome to the mathematical series. In today's class, we are going to learn the mathematical concepts related with time, speed, and distance. You know, since the time CLAT has changed its format to caselets, that is, since the year 2020, no question has been asked related to time, speed, and distance. It is such a basic concept, yet no questions has been asked so far in the CLAT. That's why this time, in this year CLATs, it's highly probable that a question or a case lit might be based on the basic concepts of time, speed, and distance. Hence, the importance of this topic enhances a bit more. So let's start our today's session. So our today's session is divided into nine segments. First segment is the basic formula, then direct and inverse relation. All the way, in the end, we'll have two segments where we'll be solving two caselets. If you feel like there are particular segments that you have already mastered and you want to move on to different segments, then there are different timestamps provided in the link in the video. So you can directly swift, move forward to those segments. So let's start with the first segment. That is the basic formula. So the basic formula for time, speed, and distance. The basic formula for distance is speed into time. So this means speed will become distance upon time. Simply you take time over here. So this will be the formula that you get. Or if you take speed over here, then you get time is equal to distance upon speed. So this is the basic formula for time, speed, and distance. Let's try to solve some problems to understand this formula. The first question. A car takes 5 hours to cover 100 kilometers distance at a particular speed, whereas another car takes 3 hours to reach a particular distance at the same speed. Important point is at the same speed. We need to find the distance. So in first case, let's say car 1. It is traveling for time 5 hours and the distance it is covering is 100 kilometers. Simply by using the formula of speed, we can say that speed is equal to distance upon time. So it will be 100 by 5. That will be equal to 20 km per hour. For car 2, it is given that it is traveling for 3 hours, but it is traveling at the same speed. We need to find the difference, distance. So for car 2, the speed will be equal to 20 km per hour time is 3 hours so distance will come out to be speed into time so that will be 20 into 3 so that will come out to be 60 kilometers so answer will be b 60 kilometers it's simple we have used the formula first to calculate the speed that is distance upon time then to find distance, we've used the formula distance is equal to speed into time. Next, if a boy goes to his school from his house at 2 km per hour and returns at a speed of 3 km per hour, he takes 5 hours. That is, let's say this is the house of the student. He goes all the way to his school. Suppose this distance is x km. Now it's given that when we are when the boy is going from his house to his school, his speed is 2 km per hour. And when he is returning back from school, the speed is 3 km per hour. We are given the total time he takes in going from house to school and coming back from school to house is 5 hours. So let's break it down. So the total time is equal to time taken to go from house to school that is h to s plus the time taken to come from school to house that is school to house okay so this is nothing but he is going at a speed of 2 km per hour so time is speed upon distance so speed from house to school is 2 km per hour divided by distance it is x plus time taken from school to house it is speed upon sorry distance upon speed okay sorry that is an error
टाइम इज डिस्टेंस अपॉन स्पीड सो डिस्टेंस इज एक्स एक्स अपॉन द स्पीड दैट इज टू प्लस अगेन वेन इज कमिंग बैक द डिस्टेंस रिमेन्स द सेम सो इट विल बी एक्स डिवाइडेड बाय द स्पीड दैट इज थ्री टोटल टाइम गिवन टू अर्स इज फाइव आवर्स सो दिस मीन्स दैट फाइव इज इक्वल टू एक्स बाय टू प्लस एक्स बाय थ्री सो इफ यू सॉल्व दिस यू विल गेट फाइव इज इक्वल टू थ्री प्लस टू दैट इज फाइव एक्स अपॉन सिक्स सो दिस विल एम्प्लाय दैट एक्स इज इक्वल टू सिक्स किलोमीटर्स सो दिस विल बी आर आंसर यू आर आज द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन हिस्स हाउस एंड स्कूल बी एज्यूम्ड इट एट एज एक्स द वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स दैट वील गेट इज सिक्स किलोमीटर नो लेट्स मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट मैजिकल कंसेप्ट दैट इज Direct and inverse relation. Now, in this, distance is directly proportional to speed and time. How? Because we know the formula is distance is equal to speed into time. This implies that if speed increases, keeping the time constant, if speed increases, that is, if I am traveling for two hours earlier, I was Traveling with 30 km per hour, but now I am traveling with 60 km per hour. That is, I am increasing my speed. The distance will also increase. Hence, distance is directly proportional to speed. Similarly, if I keep speed constant and I increase the time of the journey, that is, if I am traveling with 30 km per hour, earlier I was traveling for two hours, but now I am traveling for three hours. so the distance will also increase that's why we say that distance is directly proportional to time as well similarly speed is directly proportional to distance because speed is distance upon time so this implies that speed is directly proportional to distance and it is inversely proportional to time that is if we keep the distance constant and if we are taking more time to reach at a particular pace place that means our speed will decrease and if we reduce our time of journey to reach that particular place our speed will increase similarly time is equal to distance upon speed so this implies that time will be directly proportional to distance and time will be inversely proportional to speed that is with increase in speed time will decrease with increase in distance time will increase so let's try to solve some problems related to this basic relationship between time speed and distance a is twice as fast as b and b is thrice as fast as c now the journey covered by c in 1.5 hours will be covered by a in what time okay so here we are given that a journey is being covered that is a b and c they all are covering the same journey that means that distance is constant okay so if distance is constant this means that speed will be inversely proportional to time okay now the time taken by c is 1.5 hours but b is thrice as fast as c that means b is speed speed of b is equal to 3 times speed of c let speed of c be c okay so this will imply speed of b will be equal to 3 times c that is the ratio of speed of b and c is 3 is to 1 so ratio of speed of b to c it is 3 speed of b upon speed of c this ratio is given to us it is 3c by c that is equal to 3 by 1 since speed is inversely proportional to time 
hence the ratio of time will be completely inverse to that of speed this means time of b upon time of c it will be equal to inverse of this so inverse of this is 1 by 3 now time of c is 1.5 hours so time of b will be equal to One point five by three, so that is equal to zero point five hours. This is the time taken by B. Now A is twice as fast as B. That means speed of A upon speed of B is equal to two upon one. using the same relation that speed is inversely proportional to time we can say time of a upon time of b will be inverse of this so inverse of 2 by 1 is nothing but 1 by 2 time of b we have already calculated it is 0.5 hours so time of a will be equal to 0.5 by 2 so that is equal to 0.25 hours now we know that 1 hour equals to 60 minutes so this implies 0.25 hours is equal to 0.25 into 60 so that will come out to be 15 minutes so our answer will be b 15 minutes next a and b started at the same time from the same place for a certain destination walking at 5 by 6 of a's speed b reached the destination 1 hour 15 minutes after a okay so we are given the ratio of the speeds of a and b so speed of a upon speed of b so that is equal to now b is walking at 5 by 6 of a speed so that is 5 by 6 speed of a and this is speed of a so that will be equal to 6 by 5 okay so this ratio comes out to be 6 by 5 now let us assume that the speed of a is 6 units okay and the speed of b is 5 units difference between the time taken okay this is 6 units and this is 5 units so firstly we'll say that they are traveling for the same destination so distance is constant distance is constant this means that speed will be inversely proportional to time okay so the ratio of their times will be that is time of a upon time of b it will be equal to the inverse relation so that will be 5 by 6 okay so this is the ratio of their times that is 5 and 6 now we know the difference between the time taken that is b reached the destination 1 hour 15 minutes after a that is difference between the time taken is 1 hour 15 minutes the ratio was 5 is to 6 that means the difference of one unit so one unit is equal to 1 hour 1 hour and 15 minutes so one unit is equal to 1 hour 15 minutes that is nothing but 6 minus 5 so this value comes out to be 1 hour and 15 minutes so this implies time of a we need to find b reach the destination in what time so time of b so time of b was nothing but 6 units so 6 units is equal to 6 times the value of one unit that is 1 hour 15 minutes so that will be nothing but 6 hours plus 15 6 and 90 that is 6 hours and 90 minutes 
So if you convert it, you will get it as seven hours and thirty minutes. So answer will be C. So in this case also the distance was constant, hence speed was inversely proportional to time. The ratio of their speed was given to us. That is, B was traveling with five by six, the speed of A. From that we got the ratio as six by five. After that we know the relation between them that they share a inverse relation. So that means time of A and time of B will be the complete inverse of this. So it will become five by six. Now the difference between these two, that is one unit, six units minus five units, that was one unit. And this difference in time was given to us. It was one hour and fifteen minutes. So one unit value is one hour fifteen minutes. We needed to calculate the time of B. So the time of B was six units. So six units will be equal to six times the value of one unit, which is one hour fifteen minutes. So this comes out to be seven hours and thirty minutes. Next, a train starts from Meerut at four p.m. and reaches Ghaziabad at five p.m. Okay. While another train Y it starts from Ghaziabad at 4 p.m. and reaches Meerut at 5:30 p.m. Again, the distance is constant, so this implies that the speed will be inversely proportional to time. Okay. Now train X, time for train X. So time for train X is equal to it starts from 4 p.m. And it reaches at 5 p.m. That is one hour time for y. It is equal to it starts at 4 p.m. and reaches at 5:30. So time is 1.5 hours. Okay, 30 minutes can be written as 0.5 hours. Hence the time is 1.5 hours, or it can be written as 3 by 2 hours. Now the ratio of time for x and y, time of x upon time of y, it is equal to one upon three by two, so that will be equal to two by three. Again, we know that the that the speed is inversely rela related with time, hence the ratio of their speed, that is, speed of x with respect to speed of y. So their ratio will be three by Two, okay. So the ratio will be three by two. Now it is given that the two trains will cross each other at what time? We need to find the time when both of these trains will cross each other. We know that distance is constant. Let's say this constant distance is k kilometer. Okay, it is k kilometer. This distance is k kilometer. And let we we must assume that the speed of x, that is train x, is nothing but three x, and the speed of y is two x. Okay, so we have assumed the speed of train y as two x and the speed of train x as three x. Now we know that to travel the distance of k kilometer, train x takes one hour. So this means distance that is k. Is equal to speed that is 3x into time that is 1. So k is equal to 3x. This is the relation that we get. Now we need to find the two trains will cross each other at what time. Now when both the trains as they are moving towards each other, one is moving from Meerut to Ghaziabad and another is moving from Ghaziabad to Meerut. When both trains are moving opposite to each other. Their relative speed, the concept which we will study further in the class, their relative speed becomes the addition of their speeds. So the total speed will become 3x plus 2x. So that will be equal to 5x. We need to find the time after which they will meet. So we know the distance that is k upon the speed that is 5x. We know the value of k is 3x. So it will be 3x upon 5x. So that will be equal to three by five. So that is equal to zero point six hours. Okay, zero point six hours. If you convert it into minutes, it will be thirty six minutes. So as they are leaving for four p.m., so four thirty six is the time when they are going to meet with 
each other okay so in this question also distance was constant speed was inversely proportional to time we knew the time of both the trains hence we could find the ratio of their speeds then we assumed their speeds were 3x and 2x we calculated the distance in terms of x so distance came out to be 3x then we found the time at which they will cross each other using the concept of relative speed next the speed of a steam engine is 24 km per hour without any wagon that is it is just the speed of the engine no wagon is attached to the steam engine yet the decrease in speed of the engine is directly proportional to the square root of number of wagons attached so let decrease in speed be denoted by delta s this is decrease in speed it is proportional to the square root of number of wagons so square root of number of wagons let n denote the number of wagons now if four wagons are attached with engine the speed becomes 20 km per hour now firstly whenever we remove this proportionality sign we should introduce a constant that is k under root n so this is a general mathematical principle that whenever you remove this proportionality sign and you are introducing the equal to sign you introduce a constant here we have introduced the constant k okay k under root n now it is given that when four wagons are attached that is when n is equal to 4 then the speed becomes 20 km per hour that means the change in speed is earlier the speed was 24 now it has become 20 so change in speed is equal to 4 km per hour keeping this value in this equation we will get delta s is 4 so 4 is equal to k under root of n that is 4 so this will imply that k is equal to 2 so the value of k it comes out to be 2 this implies the equation becomes delta s is equal to 2 times under root of n now in the question it is asked find the maximum number of wagons which are attached with engine so that engine can move okay we need to find the minimum number of wagons that can be attached so that the engine can move so what we can do is we'll try to attach maximum wagons that is possible so that it cannot move okay so maximum to maximum the decrease in speed can be 24 that is we are assuming a point when the engine cannot move so we are trying to find the number of wagons when attached with the engine the engine will not be able to move so the decrease in speed that will be maximum speed will be 24 it is equal to 2 under root n so this from this we get the value of n will be 144 so when 144 wagons are attached the engine will not be able to move hence for it to just move we will need to remove one wagon so we will remove one wagon so it will become 143 hence the answer comes out to be 143 not 144 next the next magical concept that we are going to study is the unit conversion and believe me this is the area where maximum students make mistakes simply because we forget to change the units or we just neglect the units that are given in the passage or in the question hence it is very important for us to understand that whenever we are solving the questions especially in time speed and distance we ensure that their units are similar okay because we cannot add apples into oranges we need to have similarities to add them we can only add apples to apples and oranges to oranges so make sure that you have the same units whenever you are adding subtracting multiplying or even dividing now we all know 1 km is equal to 1000 meters time 1 hour is 60 minutes 1 minute is 60 seconds so 1 hour will be equal to 3600 seconds now 1 km per hour it can be written as 1000 meter divided by 3600 seconds so from that you get 5 by 18 meter per second so this is the magical formula so whenever you need to convert 1 km per hour 
so it will be equal to 5 by 18 meter per second so this is the magical formula and this formula works both the ways that is if you want to convert 1 meter per second into kilometer per hour it would simply be 18 by 5 kilometer per hour this is the magical formula that you must all remember if you remember this you can do many calculations quite easily let's try to solve some problems we need to find the ratio of two trains one traveling at 45 km per hour and the other at 10 meter per second okay so these are 45 apples and that are 10 oranges you cannot divide apples by oranges so you need to convert them into the same unit so here what you can do is either you can convert 40 km per hour into meter per second or you can convert meter per second into kilometer per hour whatever you feel is the easier way to do you can do that now here the speed is 45 km per hour if i have to convert it into meter per second so it will become 45 into 5 by 18 so it will be a bit tough to calculate this hence what we can do is we can convert 10 meter per second into kilometer per hour so 10 into 18 by 5 so that is quite easy so that will become 36 km per hour so simply the ratio will become 45 by 36 so that is nothing but 5 by 4 so our answer will be 5 by 4 so make sure that you use the logical brain and you convert the unit that is easier to convert and easier to calculate even if you do this you will get the same answer but the calculation might become a bit cumbersome so it's better that you convert meter per second into kilometer per hour next a man reaches a certain distance 12 minutes late if he decreases his speed by 5 kilometer per hour if the distance of his destination is 30 kilometer then what was the initial speed of the man now here we are given destination in kilometers we are given that it reduces the speed in kilometer per hour and the options are also given in kilometer per hour hence we will convert this 12 minutes into hours now we know that 1 hour is 60 minutes so 12 minutes will be so simply 1 minute is equal to 1 by 60 hours or 12 minutes they will be equal to 12 by 60 hours so that will come out to be 0.2 hours okay next let the speed of the man be x kilometer speed be x kilometer per hour okay now if he reduces his speed by 5 kilometer per hour so now the speed is x minus 5 the time taken will automatically a certain distance 12 minutes late that is time taken is increased by 12 minutes that is 0.2 so let's say it will be t plus 0.2 and this will be equal to our distance that is 30 so initially when he was traveling with x kilometer per hour and for t time he was able to cover 30 km so these are the two equations that we have 1 and 2 if we solve 1 and 2 we'll get the answer for the speed that is x okay so solving this two equation we can say from equation 1 we put the value of equation 2 that is x into t that is 30 we put that value in equation 1 so equation 1 becomes xt plus 0.2x plus sorry it will be minus minus 5 into t minus 1 and that is equal to 30 so we put the value of x t that is 30 over here so 30 if we keep over here it will become 30 plus 0.2x minus 5t minus 1 equals to 30 now 30 and 30 will get cancel out so this will become 0.2x is equal to 5t plus 
Again, from this, we can put the value of t that is 30 by x. So the value of t that we'll get will be 30 by x. So t is nothing but 30 by x. So 5 into 30 divided by x plus 1 is equal to 0 0.2 x. So if we solve this equation, we'll get the answer. It will come in or rather what you can do is you can just say 0.2. So instead of 0.2, you can write it as 1.5x that is equal to 5 into 30 divided by x plus 1. So that will be equal to 5 if you take over here, it will become 25 into 30. So that is 750 plus 5x is equal to x square so this is the equation now if you can you can try to put the options as well in this equation to solve this problem and if you do that you will get the answer so if you solve this quadratic equation it becomes x square minus 5x minus 750 is equal to 0. So we can try to split the middle term. So it will become x square minus 30x plus 25x minus 750 is equal to 0. So from this we will get the value of x as 30 kilometer per hour. So our answer will be 30 kilometer per hour. Next, the next magical concept that we are going to learn about is the average speed. Now, average speed is simple total distance upon total time. Here, another important concept to understand is that average of speed is speeds 1 plus speed 2 plus speed 3 till the n divided by total number of speeds, while average speed is total distance upon total time so this is particularly an area where maximum students make mistake so whenever you are trying to find the average make sure that you have read the questions properly whether it is average of speed or whether it is average speed you need to make sure of that so average of speed will be calculated in such manner and average speed will be calculated by total distance upon total time let's do some question on this so car travels from a to b with 40 km per hour and returns from B to A with 60 km per hour. It's average speed during the whole journey. So let's say this point is A. It's going from A to B. Let's say this distance is D kilometer. Okay. So when it is going from A to B, the speed is 40 km per hour. Speed is this from A to B. Distance is D kilometers. So the time will be, time from A to B will be D upon 40. Similarly, when it is coming from B to A, so speed from B to A, it is given to us, it is 60 kilometer per hour. Distance given to us is D kilometer and time from B to A, it will be D upon 60 distance upon speed. We need to find the average speed. Now the average speed formula is total distance upon total time. So total distance from A to B plus B to A. So it will be D plus D d plus d divided by total time so total time will be time from a to b and time from b to a so a to b plus b to a so it will become d by 40 plus d by 60 so the average speed will become 2 times d and we can take d common from here so it will become 1 by 40 plus 1 by 60 so D will get cancelled out and this will become 2 into 40 into 60 upon 40 plus 60. 
So that will be equal to 48 kilometer per hour. So answer will be D, 48 kilometer per hour. Now this is one of the ways of solving this and calculating the average speed. Another magical way to do that, it is whenever such kind of questions are given where we have to retrace the path, that is we will go from A to B and again come from B to A. Then to calculate the average speed, simple formula, the magical formula is average speed is equal to 2 times xy upon x plus y, where x is equal to speed 1 and y is equal to speed 2. So in our case, speed 1 is 40 kilometer, that is 40, and the speed 2, that is 60. So our average speed will be simply 2 times 40 into 60 upon 40 plus 16. So if you do that, it is the same thing as we have done by using this traditional way. So this is the magical way to calculate such questions whenever we are retracing the path. At that point, you can simply use this formula of average speed, which is 2xy upon x plus y. x and y are the two speeds that are given to us. Okay. Next. An aeroplane covers the four sides of a square field at speeds of 200, 400, 600 and 800 km per hour. Then what is the average speed of the plane in the entire journey? Again, we need to find the average speed. So let this be the square with vertices as A, B, C and D. Okay. So we need to find the average speed that is the total distance. AB plus BC plus CD plus DA. Now since it is a square field, this means all these sides will be equal. AB, BC, CD and DA, they all will be equal. And let that be X kilometer. So this is X kilometer. Now we are given different speeds. 200, 400, 600 and 800 kilometer per hour. So simply we need to find the average speed. So average speed will be nothing but total distance upon total time. So that will be equal to total distance will be x plus x plus x plus x. So that is upon total time. Let the speed from A to B be 200. So the total time will become distance upon a speed that is x upon 200 plus x upon 400 plus x upon 600 plus x upon 800. Okay. So if you calculate this, it will become 4 times x upon x common. So this will become 1 upon 200 plus 1 upon 400 plus 1 by 600 plus 1 by 800. Okay, so this is what we get from this. So if you solve this, you can again take 100 common from them or if you want, you can take even 200 common from all of this. So this will become 4x upon x upon 200. So this is x upon 200. This will become 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 4. Okay, so if you solve this, it will come out to be 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 4. So the LCM will come out to be 12. So it will be 4x and x will get cancelled and 200 will come in the numerator. So it will be 4 into 200 divided by the LCM will be 12. It will be 12. 12. So this will be 6 plus 4 plus 3. This will become 25. This will be 4 into 200 into 12. 25 8 are. So that will become 32 into 12. So 
32 into 12, 12 twos are 24, it will come out to be 4 to 32, 36, 384 kilometer per hour. So our answer will come out to be 384 kilometer per hour. Now the formula that we learned in the last question that was average speed was 2xy upon x plus y. Now when you have equal distances like this, then also this formula can be extended to that. In such cases, the average speed will become 4 times x, y, z and one more value if you want, you can take it as alpha. Okay, so 4 x, y, z and alpha upon it will become x, y, z plus x z alpha plus y z alpha okay so x y z y z alpha and x y alpha so this and one more term you will get it will be x y alpha okay so these are the four terms and these are the four speeds that you will get but this becomes quite cumbersome to remember so it's better to understand this basic concept once you have understood this basic concept you will not used to extend this formula because memorizing the formulas can be a bit tough so it's better that you only remember this particular formula this is just for your knowledge that this formula can be extended to four values five values six values to n number of values but you don't really need to do it you just understand this basic concept and from that you can calculate the values when they are given more than two values if only two values are given then simply we can use this formula otherwise it might become a bit cumbersome and it might become a bit tough to remember those formulas hence no need to use or remember such formulas just remember this basic concept next the next concept is very crucial concept and this concept is related with the relative speed relative speed when two objects are moving towards each other that is one object is moving in this direction and another object is moving in the direction opposite to x and they are moving towards each other so in such case the relative speed it becomes x plus y kilometer per hour that means if you are traveling in this let's say these are two cars okay car x and car y so if you are traveling in car x you will feel that car y is approaching you at a speed of x plus y kilometer per hour similarly if you are in car y you will as you will feel as if the car x is approaching you at the speed of x plus y kilometer per hour now when two objects they are moving in the same direction with the speed x and y the relative speed will be x minus y in this case the car is moving x kilometer with in this direction and another is moving with y kilometer per hour in the same direction let's say x is greater than y so if you are in y car if you are in this car car y you will feel that this car x is traveling with a speed of x minus y kilometer per hour more than you and if you are in car x you will feel that the car y is moving at a speed x minus y kilometer per hour slower than you hence the relative speed will be x minus y so simply remember if they are moving in the same direction relative speed will be x minus y and if they are moving in the opposite direction the relative speed will be x plus y even if you remember this thing you will be able to solve problems related with relative speed let's do the question Two men A and B walk from P to Q, a distance of 22 km at 5 and 6 km per hour respectively. B reaches Q, returns immediately and meets A at R. We need to find the distance from P to R. So firstly, they are walking from P to Q. So let's drop P to Q first. So this is P and this is Q. This distance given to us is 22 kilometer now a is walking at 5 kilometer per hour 
A's speed is 5 km per hour. The speed of B is 6 km per hour. B reaches Q. Now obviously since the speed of B is more than A, B will reach Q faster than A. Time taken by B to reach Q will be distance is 22 upon speed that is 6. So this time will come out to be 11 by 3 hours. This is the time which is taken by B to reach Q. Okay, so that is time taken by B to reach Q. So that is 11 by 3 hours. Now the relative speed of A and B when they are both traveling from P that is they are both traveling in the same direction. So the relative speed will be 6 minus 5. So that is 1 kilometer per hour. Time for which they have traveled. So that is 11 by 3 hours. So time is 11 by 3 hours. So this means the distance that is the relative distance will be equal to relative speed into time. So relative speed is 1 into time that is 11 by 3. So it will be 11 by 3 kilometer. So this is the relative distance that means that B has traveled 11 by 3 kilometer more than A. Okay, that is the distance between them is 11 by 3 kilometer. So when B has reached Q, okay, now in this, this is P, this is Q. Earlier A and B both were present over here, but now B has reached at this point. Okay, and distance between B and A, let's say A has reached this point. So this distance given that we have calculated that is the relative distance. So this relative distance is nothing but 11 by 3 kilometers. So this is the relative distance between A and B. This is the first case. Now second what happens is B reaches Q and he returns immediately and meets A at R. That means they are going to meet somewhere in the middle that is at this point which is R. Now we need to find the distance from P to R. Okay. We need to find this particular distance. So this is what we need to calculate. So firstly, now in this case, now again B will return back to A and A is moving towards Q. That means now A is moving at a speed of 5 km per hour, 5 km per hour in this direction and B is again moving with the speed of 6 km per hour in the opposite direction. Hence their relative speed will be addition of both. So that will be 5 plus 6. So that will be equal to 11 km per hour. So that will be their relative speed. The distance that they need to cover is 11 by 3 km. So the time to do so will be distance upon the relative distance upon the relative speed. So that is equal to 11 by 3 upon 11. So that will be equal to 1 by 3 hours. So after 1 by 3 hour, they will meet each other at R. Now we need to calculate the distance PR. So distance PR is equal to distance PA or rather we know what is the distance PA. Okay, let's calculate distance PA plus distance A to R. Now distance from P to A. We already know the distance from P to Q is equal to 11 by 3. Okay, from P to Q. The distance was 22 kilometer. So from P to A, that is this point, the distance will be 22 minus 11 by 3 plus distance from A to R. Now from A to R, the time taken by A to reach R is 1 by 3 R and it is moving at the speed of 5 km per hour. So distance will be 5 into 1 by 3. So if you solve this, you will get 
22 minus 6 by 3 that will be equal to 20 kilometer. So this is the distance of P to R. So our answer will be 20 kilometer. So this question had two parts. First part in which A and B, they both were moving in the same direction. Okay, when they both were moving in the same direction, their relative speed becomes 6 minus 5, that is 1 kilometer per hour. Now they are moving in this direction until B reaches the point Q. Now time taken by B to reach Q is total distance upon the speed of B, that is 6. So it is 11 by 3 hours. So till 11 by 3 hours, they are moving in the same direction. So the relative speed, the relative distance between them will be relative speed into time. So 1 is the relative speed time 11 by 3 hours. So the relative distance between them will be 11 by 3 kilometer. So that means the distance between this point to this point that is A and B. A and Q you can say it will be 11 by 3 kilometer. So at this point after 11 by 3 hours B has reached over here at Q and A is somewhere between P and Q and the distance between them is 11 by 3 kilometer. Hence distance P to A it will be total distance that is 22 minus this distance 11 by 3. So this will be distance P and Now in this case this is case 2. Now again B starts to return back towards P that is A is moving with 5 kilometer in this direction and B is moving with 6 in opposite direction. So now they are moving in opposite direction hence their relative speed will be added 5 plus 6 it will become 11 kilometer per hour. The distance the relative distance between them that they need to cover in order to meet each other will be 11 by 3 kilometer. The time taken to do so will be 1 by 3 hours. Now in this 1 by 3 hours A must have traveled certain distance to reach R. So distance is simply speed into time. So speed is 5 kilometer per hour and time is 1 by 3 hours. So it will become 5 by 3. So if you do the calculation the distance will come out to be 20 kilometer. So this is a very good question a very classic question wherein we have to use the concept of relative speed both the concepts that we have studied when two objects are traveling in the same direction and when two objects are traveling in the opposite directions. Both the concepts need to be realized in this question in order to solve it. Next, Suresh and Piyush they start their journey at the same point in opposite directions. Okay, now they have started their journey from the same point. Okay, let's say that this point, this is the point from where they have started their journey. Now they have started their journey at the same point in opposite direction. Okay, that means if Suresh is going in this direction, Piyush is going in this direction. So one thing you need to keep a note of is that whenever you read the term opposite direction, don't just add up the relative speeds. Try to understand that what the problem is trying to say. Now here they are starting from the common point. Let's say this common point was A and they moved in opposite direction. So Suresh moved over, moved towards right and Piyush moved towards left. After 6 hours the distance between them is 366 kilometers. Let's say this distance is 366 kilometers and the time is 6 hours. If the speed of Suresh is 4 km more than that of Piyush, that means Suresh speed let that be S minus the Piyush speed let that be P. So difference between them given to us is 4. Okay. Suresh is 4 km per hour more than that of Piyush. So Suresh speed minus Piyush speed is 4. We need to find the speed of Piyush. Okay. Now here since they are moving in opposite directions okay one is moving in this and one is moving in this direction again the relative speed between them it will be speed of Suresh plus speed of Piyush so this will be their relative speed even though they are moving in the opposite direction they are moving from A one in right side one another on the left side yet their relative speed will be S plus P the distance that they have to travel is 366 and the time they have traveled is 6 hours. So from this we can calculate relative speed is equal to distance upon time. 
so this will imply that relative speed that is s plus p is equal to distance is 366 by 6 so that will come out to be 61 so s plus p is equal to 61 and s minus p is equal to 4 we need to calculate the speed of Pierce, so we'll simply subtract this equation and this equation. So it will become 2 times P is equal to 57 by, sorry, not 2, 61 minus 4, it will be 57, so P will be 28.5 km per hour. So speed of Pierce will be 28.5 km per hour. So simply by using the concept of relative speed, we can calculate, we can find the solution of this particular problem. Next, now the next thing that we are going to study is the basic concepts that are related with trains. So we'll try to solve some problems based on trains. So conceptual problems related with train, let's see. A 250 meter long train, it crosses a platform of length 350 meters in 50 seconds. Now one of the important things to remember, especially when the length of the train, length of the platform or length of the bridge comes into play is that, let's say that this is the train, okay? So this is the length of the train. And let's say its ends are A and B. Let's say we have a platform over here. Okay. Now this platform, let the length of this platform be P. And let its endpoints be C and D. So CD is our platform and AB is our train. Now if this train is to cross a platform, that means it will start crossing the platform when B point is over here and a point is over here so this is the point and this b and c they are in the same line so this is the point when the train will start to cross the platform okay once it has crossed the platform that means its end point that is a is over here and b is over here okay so this is the point we can say that train has completely crossed this platform C, D. That is when end point of A has reached the end point of the platform D. We can say that the train has completely crossed the platform. That is the distance from this A till this A is the distance that has been traveled by the train. So this distance is nothing but this is length of train and this distance is nothing but length of platform. So this distance is equal to length of train plus length of platform. That is the only thing we need to keep in mind while we solve such types of questions. The length of train and the length of platform will be the total distance covered by the train in order to cross the platform. Let's see in this question now, a 250 meter long train, that means length of the train is 250 meters, length of the platform 350 meters, so this is 350, so total distance that it has traveled is length of train plus length of platform, so that is equal to 600. It does that in 50 seconds, so time is 50 seconds so speed will be distance upon time so 600 by 50 it will come out to be sorry it will come out to be 12 meter per second so this is the speed of the train now we need to find the time for train to cross a bridge of length 230 meters similarly again now we have length of bridge that is 230 meters length of train again we know is 250 meters so total distance that the train has to travel to cross the bridge will be again length of bridge plus length of train. So that is equal to 480 meters. The speed is 12 meter per second. So the time taken will be distance upon speed that is 480 upon 12 
So that will be equal to 40 seconds. So the answer will come out to be B, 40 seconds. So such kind of questions are very easy. We just need to know this magical concept that yes, whenever a train is crossing a platform or a bridge, the total distance traveled by it will be length of the train plus the length of the platform or the length of the bridge. Next, a train, again length of the train is given to us. It travels at 60 km per hour. How long does it take to cross another train 170 meter long running at 54 km per hour in the same direction? Again, in such kind of questions, let's say it is train AB and another train that we have is train CD. Okay. Length of train AB and this is the length of train CD. Okay. Now, if AB train has to cross the train CD again, what it has to do is we'll again say that if it has to cross CD, that means the train AB. So, at this point, B will start that is train AB will start crossing the train CD. Now, in order to successfully cross it, it has to come over here. So that is, it will be A and B. That means at this point, now we can say that yes, train AB has successfully overtaken train CD. Now in this process, again, the distance that is traveled is this. So this is equal to, this distance is nothing but length of AB and this distance is nothing but length of CD. Okay, so this is the relative distance that it has to travel in order to overtake this train. Now, let us assume that this train, train CD, okay, so by the time AB is trying to overtake it, this CD must have also traveled certain distance and that distance is traveled by AB as well. That's why we say the relative distance between the two trains in order to overtake it will be the relative distance will be length of AB plus length of CD. This will be the relative distance that will be traveled by train A by train AB to overtake CD. Okay. So let's look at this problem. There is one train which, which, uh, whose length is 110 meters. So let's say it's train AB. So length of AB is equal to 110. It is traveling at a speed of 60 km per hour. So speed of AB is equal to 60. Similarly, length, length of train CD is equal to 170 meters and speed of CD is equal to 54 km per hour. So we'll convert this into meter per second 5 by 18. This is also will we'll convert it into meter per second. So it will be again converted into 5 by 18. So this will become 15 meter per second and this will become 50 by 3 meter per second and this is 15 meter per second. Okay. So we need to find the relative speed since they both are moving in the same direction. Both the trains are moving in the same direction. Hence, the relative speed will be speed of AB minus speed of CD. So, AB minus CD, it will be 50 by 3 minus 15. So, that will come out to be 5 by 3 meter per second. So, this is the relative speed. Now, the total distance is equal to length of both the trains. That is length of AB plus length of CD. So, that is equal to 110 plus 170. So, that is 280 meters. Now, we need to find how long does it take. That means we need to find time. So, we know speed, we know distance. So, time can be calculated. This is not the distance, this is the relative distance. So the time will be relative distance upon relative speed. So that is equal to 280 
upon 5 by 3. If you solve it, you will get 56 into 3. So that will come out to be 168 seconds. So 168 second is nothing but 2 minutes and 48 seconds. Okay. So whether it is a train that we are overtaking or we are crossing the platform or the bridge, just remember the relative distance will always be equal to the length of the train plus the length of the platform, bridge or the train that we are trying to overtake. Okay. So just remember this simple thing and you will be able to solve the questions. Next. Two place P and Q are 162 km apart. A train leaves P for Q and simultaneously another train leaves Q for P. They meet at the end of 6 hours. If the former train travels 8 km per hour faster than the other, then find the speed of train from Q. So basically this is the question that is based on relative speed concept. Now we are given that there are two places P and Q. P and Q, they are distance given to us is 162 km per hour. Both the trains are living simultaneously. Okay. One is living from P to Q and another is living from Q to P at the same time. Now they meet at the end of six hours. Okay. If the former train, former train means the earlier train, that is the train leaving from P to Q. It travels 8 km per hour faster than the other. So let's say this is traveling at x km per hour and this is traveling at y km per hour. So x minus y is equal to 8. This is given to us because former train is traveling 8 km per hour faster than the other. So x minus y equals to 8. Then find the speed of train from q. We need to find the value of y. So x minus y is 8. Now we know that the distance that they have traveled, the relative distance that they have traveled is 162. Time they have taken is 6 hours. The relative speed, as they are moving in opposite direction, so the relative speed will be x plus y. So x plus y, that is relative speed, is equal to relative distance upon time. So distance upon time is 162 divided by 6. So that will be equal to 27. So x plus y is equal to 27 and x minus y is equal to 8. We need to find the value of y. So we'll subtract both this equation. We will get 2y equals to 27 minus 8. That is 19. So y will be equal to 9.5 kilometer per hour. So answer will be C. 9.5 kilometer per hour. Okay. Next. A train 75 meter long overtook a man who was walking at the rate of 6 km per hour and passed him in 18 seconds. Again, the train overtook a second person in 15 seconds. We need to find at what rate was the second person traveling. Now here in such questions, normally the mistake that the students make is normally in the unit conversion aspect. Now in this, the train is given 75 meter long. And the rate at which the man is walking is 6 km per hour. Okay. So in such cases, whenever we talk about overtaking a man, so we don't take into consideration the width of the man because it's negligible as compared to the length of the train. Hence, we don't take into consideration the length of the man. That is the width of the man. Okay. So in such cases, we don't take that into account. So simply it means that if I am crossing Let's say this is our train again A and B and there is this man over here. Okay, if I have to cross this man, basically it means that my B point must be over here when I'm starting to cross the train, cross the man and once I have crossed the man, my A point will reach over here and B point will reach over here. So the distance traveled will be nothing but this distance so this distance is nothing but the 
length of the train okay so this is the relative distance that the train will travel in order to overtake the man now let's understand in this question the train is is 75 meter long that means length of the train is 75 meters the speed of the man is 6 km per hour so speed of the man is 6 km per hour so we'll have to convert it into meter per second so it will be 5 by 18 so it will become 5 by 3 meter per second let the speed of train be s it passed him in 18 seconds so the time is 18 seconds so the relative speed is equal to speed of train minus speed of man that is st minus sm and this is equal to distance upon time distance is lt that is length of the train that is 75 and time taken is 18 seconds so st speed of the train we have assumed is as s minus speed of the man it is 5 by 3 so that is equal to 75 by 18 so if you have to simplify it you can simply say it's 25 by 6 so it will come out to be 25 by 6 so speed of the train will be equal to 5 by 3 plus 25 by 6 so it will come out to be 35 by 6 meter per second so that will be the speed of the train now again the train overtook a second person in 15 second so there is another man let's say the speed of the man this time is m meter per second okay time is 15 seconds okay distance is nothing but length of train the length of the train is 75 meters relative speed is equal to speed of the train that is 35 by 6 minus the speed of the man that is m meter per second and this is equal to relative speed is distance upon time so that is 75 upon 15 so that will be 5 so speed of the man this would imply that is speed of the man it will be equal to 35 by 6 minus 5 so that is equal to 5 by 6 meter per second so this will be the speed of the man but the options given to us are in kilometer per hour so meter per second into kilometer per hour so into 18 by 5 so it will come out to be 3 km per hour so answer will be a so in such questions make sure that you are able to convert the units you take care of the units especially in such kind of questions so whenever a question related to train comes first ensure that all the units are in the same form or are in the same manner next now the next problems that we are going to solve will be related to motor boats that is upstream and downstream so upstream and downstream so upstream basically means going against the flow and downstream it means going with the flow now when you are going with the flow your speed will automatically increase and when we are going against the flow our speed our speed will decrease imagine you are traveling on your bike and there is a bridge that you are crossing okay so if you are going or if you are riding towards the bridge okay so to reach at the top of the bridge or fly over your speed at that point to reach at the top it will decrease and once you are once you have reached the top point and you are trying to descend from at that point on the bridge then your speed will automatically increase so going against the flow is basically upstream that is going on the slope and when you are coming down on the slope it means it is you are going downstream okay 
so whenever we are going downstream it means we are going with the flow and upstream means against the flow whenever we are going against the flow our speed will decrease and whenever we are going with the flow our speed will increase okay now let's try to solve some problems related to upstream and downstream now there is a boat it moves downstream at a rate of 8 km per hour and upstream at a rate of 4 km per hour then find the speed of the boat in still water now whenever the problems on upstream and downstream come or related to motor boat there are two aspects to this firstly the speed of motor boat given to us is normally in still water okay let's say speed of motor boat is x kilometer per hour in still water that is when the water is not moving when the water is stagnant the speed of the motor boat is x kilometer per hour or let us assume while you are riding a bike so if you are riding a bike on a smooth road on a plain road your speed is x km per hour okay now if this motor boat is traveling in upstream direction that is it is traveling in direction opposite to the flow of the river so let us assume that the flow of the river or the speed of the stream flow of the river which is nothing but the speed of the stream is equal to y kilometer per hour okay so speed of the stream is y kilometer per hour so if you are going up stream so if you are going up stream your speed will decrease so speed will become x minus y and if you are going downstream your speed will become x plus y okay now in this particular question we are given that boat moves downstream at the rate of 8 km per hr that means this is given to us as 8 and upstream at 4 km per hr this means this value is given to us this is 4 then we need to find the speed of the boat in still water so speed of the boat in still water means x so we need to find the value of x so simply what you need to do is just add the two terms and divide by 2 so adding the two terms will become 12 and this is 2x so x will become 6 km per hour our answer will be c so in such questions whenever these things are given the magical formula is whenever downstream and upstream speeds are given the speed of the motor boat in still water let's say x will be downstream speed plus the upstream speed divided by 2 so this is also one of the way and this is also the magical formula that you can follow to calculate the speeds so simply the speed of motor boat in still water is nothing but the downstream speed plus upstream speed divided by 2 so the downstream speed given to us is 8 plus upstream 4 divided by 2 so that will also come out to be 6 similarly if you want to calculate the value of the speed of the stream so speed of the stream will simply be downstream speed minus the upstream speed divided by 2 okay so in this particular question if you put the value so it will become 8 minus 4 upon 2 so that will be 4 by 2 so that will be 2 okay so these are the two magical formulas that you can follow these are the two magical formulas that you can follow to calculate the speed of motor boat in still water and to calculate the speed of the stream if you are given the upstream speed downstream speed and the upstream speed so these are the two magical formulas that you can follow next speed of boat along and against the current okay so along the current means downstream okay and against the current means upstream okay 
against means upstream and along means downstream so along the stream the speed is 14 against the stream the speed is 8 we need to find the speed of the current that is the value of y so we have already studied the formula y is equal to downstream minus upstream by 2 so downstream minus upstream that is 14 minus 8 divided by 2 so that will be equal to 3 so answer will be 3 so you can use this magical formula and calculate the speed of the current quite easily or the speed of the motorboat as well if you had to find the speed of the motorboat it would have been simply 14 plus 8 by 2 so that will become 11 okay so do remember these magical formulas next a boat travels upstream from B to A and downstream from A to B in 3 hours. Okay. That means it is moving upstream B to A and it is moving downstream. The total time is 3 hours. Okay. That is time taken to go from B to A plus time taken to come from A to B. This total time is 3 hours. Now if the speed of the boat in a still water is 9 km per hour and the speed of the current is 3 km per hour that means value of x is 9 and the value of y is 3 now when the value of x and y are given that is the speed of motorboat and the speed of current the upstream speed it becomes x minus y and the downstream speed becomes x plus y so that will be equal to 9 minus 3 6 and this will be 9 plus 3 that is 12. We need to find the distance A and B in kilometers. Okay. So all these values are in kilometer per hour. So we don't need to make any changes in the units. So we have upstream speed, we have downstream speed. So time from B to A. B to A is upstream. So time from B to A will be distance from B to A, that is distance B A or A B. It's one and the same thing. So it's distance upon the speed. Speed is 6 plus a to b so distance is again d divided by as it is coming downstream so speed will become 12 d by 12 so that is equal to 3 so by solving this we can calculate the value of d so value of d will be equal to so d will be equal to 12 kilometer so answer will be d 12 kilometer okay so simply we have two important formulas that we have learned rather four important formula that is first if you want to calculate the speed of the motorboat in the still water and you are given the speed of upstream and downstream simply add the two speeds divide by two if you want to calculate the speed of water then simply you need to subtract downstream minus upstream and divide by two and if you are given the individual speeds of motorboat and stream, upstream speed will be x minus y and downstream speed will be x plus y. So these are the basic formulas that you need to remember whenever you solve any problems related to upstream and downstream. Let's see another question. A man can row at a speed of 4.5 km per hour in a steel water. That means x is equal to 4.5 to a certain distance upstream and back to the starting point in the river which flows at 1.5 so y is equal to 1.5 find his average speed for total journey we need to find the average speed so upstream speed will be equal to x minus y so that will be equal to 3 and downstream speed will be equal to x plus y so that will be equal to 6 now we have already read this formula of average speed we have already learned this magical formula of average speed whenever we are traveling we are retracing the same path whenever we are retracing the same path the average speed becomes 2 times x y upon x plus y where x and y are the two speeds so these two speeds that are given to us are 3 and 6 so it becomes 2 into 3 into 6 divided by 3 plus 6 so that will be equal to 
9 so that will become 4 so answer will be 4 kilometer per hour i hope you remember the average speed formula that we have studied earlier in this session if you haven't just click on that timestamp go back and go through that formula so from that formula we could have said that average speed is 2xy upon x plus y where x and y are nothing but the upstream speed and downstream speeds so upstream is 3 and downstream is 6 hence average speed will be 4 km per hour so i hope that all these concepts related to time speed and distance all the problems related with trains and motorboats are clear now now if they are clear since they are clear now we'll move on to solving the basic caselets so in the first caselet we can see that there is a train vidigya express it travels for four days in a week from monday to thursday and the distance covered by it in four days are given to us and the next thing that is given is the time taken by it on these particular days so first thing whenever you read a case list, first thing you need to identify is the data structure the table of the data structure that is how we need to organize this particular data so we are given different days so in the first column we can have monday tuesday wednesday and thursday okay next the information that is given to us is the distance covered by them so we can have distance over here the distance are 245 180 280 and 400 so these are the distance that are given to us next thing given to us is the timing so the time given to us 3.5 2.5 5 and 4 now if we know distance and we know time we can calculate the speed as well you can make another column and you can calculate the speed so speed is nothing but distance upon time so by using this formula you can calculate distance upon time so you'll get the speeds so once you get that you'll get the speeds as 70 72 56 and 100 kilometer per hour now let us move towards the question now if the average speed of Vidhigi Express and another train Vihan Express is 75 km per hour. So we are given that both of their average speed is 75 km per hour on Monday. While the time of travelling of both the trains is same on that day. That means both are travelling for the same time. That is their travel time. So that is 3 and a half hours. So both are travelling for the same time on that day then we need to find the distance covered by vihan express on monday now since we are given the average speed that is vidhan and vihan that means average speed is nothing but total distance upon total time okay so average speed is 75 total distance traveled so distance traveled by vidhan express Vidigya Express is 245 so it is 245 plus the distance traveled by Vihan Express let that be x kilometer divided by total time now time given to us is the time of traveling of both trains is same so the total time will be 3.5 into 2 so 3.5 into 2 so this will imply 75 is equal to 245 plus x upon 7. So from this we can calculate the value of x. So it will come out to be 75 into 7 minus 245. So that is 525 minus 245. So the answer will come out to be 280 kilometer so answer will be 280 kilometer next the distance to be covered by Vidhikya Express on Wednesday is increased by 25 percent on Wednesday it was covering 280 kilometer now it is increased by 25 percent okay so 25 percent of 280 so that becomes 70 so 280 plus 70 is the total distance now it is traveling on Wednesday 
and that on Thursday is decreased by 10 percent. So 400 minus 40. Now we need to find the difference of speeds of Vidhigya Express on both the days. That means we need to keep time as it is as it is given to us. So this distance becomes 280 plus 70. This is 350 and this is 400 minus 40. That is again 316. Time is 5 hours. So speed will become instead of 56. Now the speed will be distance upon time that is 350 by 5. So it will become 70. Here it will become 360 by 4. So it will be 90. So the difference between them is 20 kilometer per hour. Okay. So whenever in such questions, we have to assume that only distance is getting disturbed. That means time will remain the same. Okay. Next. On Tuesday, Vidigya Express crosses 420 meter long bridge in 50 seconds. So length of the bridge is 420 meter. Okay. Time in which it crosses is 50 seconds. We need to find the length of the train. Okay. The speed of the train on Tuesday. So speed of the train on Tuesday is 72 kilometer per hour. So we need to convert it into meter per second so it will be 20 meter per second now we know that total distance is nothing but to cross a bridge is nothing but length of train plus the length of the bridge let length of the train be l plus length of the bridge is 420 meter we know time we know speed so distance is speed into time so l plus 420 is equal to speed that is 20 into time, it is 50. So we need to find the length of the train. So length of the train will be total distance that is L plus 420. It is equal to speed into time. So speed into time that is 50 seconds. So it will come out to be 20 into 50 that will be 1000 minus 420 so that's that will be the length of the train so 1000 minus 420 will be 580 meters that will be the answer next on thursday it crosses another train vidhan express running in the same direction in two minutes the length of the vidhig and vihadhan express are 250 and 350 meter what is the speed of Vidhan Express. Okay. Now Vidigya Express it crosses another train. Vidhan. Okay. So Vidigya Express on Thursday. So Vidigya Express speed on Thursday is 100 km per hour. Okay. But the length of the trains are in meter. So we'll convert kilometer per hour into meter per second. So speed or rather in this question since the answer are also given in kilometer per hour you can let you can convert this meter into kilometer and you can convert minute into hour that is also that you can do so that later on you don't need to convert them again okay so simply what we'll do is whenever we are crossing another train so the total distance we know is nothing but the length of train ab plus length of train cd so that is nothing but two trains so the length of the two trains are given to us that is 250 plus 350 so the total distance will be 600 okay next we need to find is the relative speed so relative speed is nothing but Vidig Express the speed of Vidig Express that is 100 minus the speed of Vidhan Express that we don't know so we'll keep it as V Time is 2 minutes. So 2 minutes is nothing but 2 by 60. That is 1 by 30 hours. So we have converted minute into hours. And we have will have to convert this distance is 600 meters. So it will become 0 0.6 kilometer. Okay. So we have converted distance into kilometer time into hours. And the speed is as it is kilometer per hour. And it is V kilometer per hour hour simply put 
so relative speed that is 100 minus v it will be equal to distance upon time so that is 0 0.6 upon 1 by 13 so that will become 18 so 100 minus v equals to 18 that means v is equal to 82 kilometer per hour so our answer will be c 82 kilometer per hour so this was a basic caselet related to trains let's try to solve another caselet so the another caselet is related to motor boats so in this caselet a motor boat is traveling at a total distance of 1500 kilometer in 3 days ratio of the distance traveled in upstream to distance traveled in downstream is 7 is to 8 again we'll form first thing we'll do is form the table so first day is monday next day is wednesday and the next day given to us is friday so the data is given for 3 days monday wednesday and friday okay and we are given that distances so it is traveling some distance upstream distance and downstream distance so let's say this is the upstream distance and this is the downstream distance total distance it is traveling is 1500 kilometer and the ratio is given to us that is 7 is to 8 and this ratio is upstream distance to downstream that means 7 is to 8 this means upstream will become 700 kilometer and downstream will become 800 kilometer on monday 30 percent of the total upstream distance and 50 percent of the total downstream distance was traveled so on this 30 percent of this it will become 210 50 percent of this it will become 400 on Wednesday, 45% of the total upstream, that means 45% of 700. So, easier trick is you find the 50%, that is 350, and then you subtract the 5%. So, 5% will be 35. So, 350 minus 35, it will come out to be 315. 20% of the total downstream, so 20% of this 160. And the remaining distance will be on Friday. So the remaining on Friday is 25%. So 25 is nothing but one fourth of 700. So that will be 175. And 30%. So 30% will be 240. Okay. Further, it is known that the speed of the motorboat in still water is 80 km per hour. Okay. So once you have calculated this data, you can move on. So upstream distance we have calculated, downstream distance we have calculated, speed of the boat is given to us, it is 80 km per hour in the still water. Let's try to solve the first question. Now on Wednesday if the speed of the stream was 20% of the speed of the motor boat in the still water. Now we know speed of the motor boat is, that is x is equal to 80 and y is equal to 20% of 80, that is 20% of 80. So it will become... 16 kilometer per hour this was 80 kilometer per hour okay find the difference between the total time spent by motorboat in upstream on wednesday and total time spent by motorboat in downstream on friday so upstream on friday time sorry upstream on wednesday that is time taken on wednesday is equal to distance traveled on wednesday in upstream direction it is 315 so it will be 315 divided by the speed in the upstream. So speed will be x minus y. Okay, so it will become 80 minus 16. So it will come out to be 64. Okay, similarly time taken on Friday. So time taken on Friday. So on Friday, it is going in downstream. So distance traveled on Friday is 240. So it will become 240. Now it is going downstream. So downstream the speed will be 80 plus 16. That is 96. In upstream the speed becomes x minus y. So it becomes 64. In downstream the speed becomes x plus y. So it will become 96. Okay. Now we need to find the difference between the total time. So we need to find this difference between these two. 
so we can use approximations because we can see in the options the options are quite far with each other so we can use approximation so we can approximate this as 300 by 60 so this becomes approximately 5 hours okay and this can also be approximated as 240 by 100 so that will become approximately 2.4 hours so our answer should be around two and a half hours so the options that is nearest to two and a half hours is two hours and 24 minutes so answer will be d so using approximation is also one of the important tools whenever you are solving any caselet especially when you see that the options have a lot of variation then simply what you can do is you can use this power of approximation this is a magical thing that will get your answers just in a whim next question if the speed of the current is 10 km per hour on monday that is y is equal to 10 x we already know is 80 then find the time taken by the motorboat to travel upstream distance on that day okay now in upstream the speed will become x minus y so that will be 70 upstream distance distance on monday so upstream distance on monday is 210 so distance is 210 so time taken will be distance upon speed so that is 210 upon 70 so that becomes 3 hours so answer will be 3 hours next if the speed of the stream is 10 15 and 20 on monday wednesday and friday find the average upstream speed of motorboat on all three days so we are given the speed of the stream on monday wednesday and friday so on monday let's talk about monday so on monday the upstream speed sorry on monday we need to find the average upstream speed that means total distance traveled in upstream upon total time taken so on monday upstream speed will be x minus y so that will be 80 minus 10 so that will be equal to 70 next we know the speed distance so distance on monday we already know it's already we have calculated that is 210 So the time taken will be 210 by 70 so that will be 3 hours okay similarly on tuesday sorry on wednesday the upstream speed will be equal to again x minus y in this case the y is 15 km per hour so 80 minus 15 so that will become 65 the distance that it has to travel is 315 kilometer so the time will be let me just check if the distance is 315 or not yes it is 315 only so the time will be 315 upon 65 so if you try to cancel it it will be 13 fives are and 13 twos are 26 no it will not cancel out by 13 okay so scratch that 315 by 65 try to solve it with 5 so with 5 it will become 13 and it will become 63 so 63 by 13 hours okay in upper stream last on friday on friday the upstream speed again x minus y so it will be 80 minus 20 so it will become 60 distance that it has traveled upstream on friday is 175 so it will be 175 so time taken will be 175 divided by 60 again you can take 5 common so it will become 35 by 12 okay we need to find the average upstream speed of motorboat so average speed is nothing but total distance so total distance is 210 plus 315 plus 175 divided by total time that is 3 plus 63 by 13 
प्लस थर्टी फाइव बाय ट्वेल्व ओके सो इफ यू सॉल्व दिस यू विल गेट द एवरेज स्पीड इन दिस पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन यू कैन ट्राई टू फाइंड द एवरेज स्पीड एंड शेयर द आंसर इन द कॉमेंट सेक्शन बिलो नेक्स्ट If on certain day motor boat goes downstream from point A for five hours to a certain point and travelled back for five hours and reached to point B, then find the distance between point A and B if the speed of the stream is twenty kilometer per hour. Okay, it is saying that on a certain day a motor boat it goes downstream. So we know the speed of the motor boat is eighty. The speed of the stream is 20 okay so if it is going downstream so downstream the speed will be x plus y so that will be equal to 100 and if it is traveling back that means it is traveling okay let's consider first for the downstream it goes downstream from a for 5 hours so time is equal to 5 hours okay so the total distance uh, sorry downstream speed is 100 km per hour time is 5 hours so the distance will be 100 into 5 so that will be 500 km okay so that is the distance from a to a certain point let's say that is c so from a to c okay this distance is 500 km and this is downstream now again it traveled back for 5 hours okay now when it is traveling back it is going in upstream so the speed in upstream will be x minus y so that will be equal to 80 minus 20 that is 60 time is again 5 hours so distance will be 60 into 5 so that will be equal to 300 km okay so from c to a certain point b it has reached this c into b is 300 km we need to find the distance between the point a and b so a and b that means a will be here b is here c is here a to c the distance was 500 so ab will be nothing but 500 minus 300 so that is 200 km okay so that is all that we had from the basic concepts related to time speed and distance i hope you all learn this magical concepts of time speed and distance if you have any doubts then you can contact us during the faculty contacting hours and do keep in mind that until now clat hasn't asked any questions since 2020 related to time speed and distance hence i would advise and suggest that you pay special attention on this particular topic so thank you until we meet in the next session Take care and goodbye.